Hey guys, it's Sandra here with a video today that looks at using a rotary motion polisher to correct automotive paint. So not to be confused with a dual action polisher, which is what I normally use these days and show in most of my videos, a rotary polisher is where I started out because dual action polishers just weren't around back then. But I've had a lot of requests for this video, so I thought I'd finally put one out. Now although I've just finished editing and uploading this video, I actually shot it about 6 months ago when I first got my hands on the newish Rippers LHR19 Rotary Polisher, as well as the Rippers Rotary Polishing System, which includes their rotary pads and compounds to test them all out and get a feel for what they're like. So I'll also be discussing that and giving my opinions. As we have a look at the pads and compounds available, you'll see that there are very fine and gentle pads and polishers for your final finishing stages of rotary polishing to the more aggressive pads and compounds used to level down severe paint defects, such as on the test panel you guys saw at the start of this video. And hopefully as we get to correcting the paint, you'll come to understand why it's vital to have these light to medium and coarse pads and compounds to initially address the paint defects and then refine the paint to a near perfect finish. So to start with, I want to first discuss the work size areas and workflow method. In general, it's best to work a section at a time that's approximately 6 times the size of your pad. So the larger your polishing pad, the larger the area you can successfully correct, and the smaller your pad, the smaller the work area. You'll also see that I'm dividing the panel into several sections, three of which I'm going to use my larger 5 inch pad to correct the larger flatter areas on the panel, and then I'll be using my smaller 2 inch pad to correct the paint in the more intricate areas and all the panel edges. Next I need to decide which pad and compound I'm going to use as my starting point. Now it's always best to start with the least aggressive combination as the less paint and clear coat you remove the better. But looking at this severely damaged paint it's clear to me that an extremely fine polish and pad just aren't going to be capable of removing these defects. So although I'm looking for the least aggressive method, it still needs to have the ability to be successful or I'm just wasting my time. Now in my experience, the coarse pads and compounds are most likely what's going to be needed to remove these particular defects. However, if the paint turns out to be super soft and sensitive, then those coarse pads and compounds may in fact be far too aggressive and remove far too much paint. So the best and safest starting point here is a medium compound with an intermediate pad. Now there's obviously no way known I can explain all the different techniques and methods available with rotary polishing in a single video. So I'm just going to stick with the basic tips and techniques. Now there are exceptions to all these rules, but before you learn to break the rules it's vital you learn them. And unlike using a dual action polisher which has a fairly quick learning curve, a rotary can take years and a lot of practice to truly master. So firstly make sure your pad is always perfectly centered on your backing plate and always use the same size backing plate for the same size corresponding pad. Try to stick to the low to mid speeds at first and then jump up to the higher speeds as needed down the track. A rotary used at lower speeds with light to medium pads and compounds is quite a safe tool. It's only when you start using it more aggressively that the risk of damaging the paint occurs. Always keep your pad perfectly flat on the paint. It's only when you start tilting the pads up or down that the rotary becomes difficult to control. But keeping it perfectly flat is also something that takes a bit of practice. Start with 4 to 5 drops of your compound on a large clean pad. But as you progress you should use less compound once the pad is primed. Dab the compound into your work area and then using a slow speed, spread it into the section to ensure a more consistent result throughout that section. Now compared to using a dual action polisher, my arm speed is approximately twice as fast with a rotary. 
But it's not some crazy, super fast sweeping action that honestly achieves very little correction work at all. You want to find a good balance of machine speed versus arm speed versus pressure. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are exceptions to these rules that are honestly difficult to explain and really go into without this video dragging on and probably confusing most viewers. Try and clean your pad out after every set of passes to remove the residue buildup. Use a microfiber cloth to wipe the panel areas clean and then use an IPA or alcohol based cleaner to remove any polishing oils so that you can clearly assess the paintwork. Trying to assess your results with overhead fluorescent lights or flood shop lights is like working in the dark. Proper lighting is important guys, and I still see many professional detailers using inadequate light sources to assess their work, which is really worrisome. But the two things you always need to assess is how much of those existing defects have you removed, and what is the finish like in relation to gloss and clarity. Now I can see that I've removed about half of those defects and that I've increased the gloss level or clarity of the paint, but I've also left some minor holograms in the finish, which is absolutely normal when using a rotary to remove paint defects. Past experience tells me that the remaining 50% of the defects on the paint will be a lot more work to remove than the first 50% so I really do need to increase the aggression level of my pads and compounds, as well as my technique, if I'm gonna be successful at removing the remaining defects in a timely manner. As such, I'm stepping up to both a more aggressive pad and compound, but once again, I'm not immediately jumping to the most aggressive compound available, as I still wanna use the least aggressive method that has the ability to achieve the results I'm after. I'm also adjusting my technique by using a slightly faster machine speed and doing an extra row of passes in the hope of removing a little more of the defects. When inspecting this test section, I can see that I've definitely removed a lot more of those defects, but still not to the higher level of paint correction that I'm after. And I can also see that I've created a little more haze and holograms than the first section, which again is completely normal, as in general, the more aggressive you are, the worse the finish will be. For a third test section, I use the same coarse compound, but this time on the most aggressive wool pad which in my experience does significantly cut more effectively and more aggressively than any foam pad. I also slightly increased my machine speed and made sure to prime all the fibers of the wool pad for increased performance. But besides that, my technique was very similar. In this third test section, I can see that I've removed almost all the existing defects, but yet again, I can also see increased levels of compounding marks and rotary induced swells and holograms. So with this last combination and technique achieving the results that I was after, I basically broke down the panel into those same smaller sections that I showed at the start of the video, using my larger pads to correct the larger flatter areas and my smaller pads for the smaller areas and edge work. The reason it's really important to use smaller pads for the tighter areas and edges is firstly that larger pads are just too big to get into those areas and achieve high levels of correction. 
Secondly, larger pads are far more dangerous on panel edges, where the paint is a lot more susceptible to burns. So smaller pads are both more effective and safer for your edge work. The only catch is that it takes a little longer. Now as we look at the results after compounding the entire half panel, you should be able to see that the existing deeper defects have been removed, but the rotary compounding has left some minor defects of its own behind, which are holograms, haze and rotary marring. So when we talk about doing a two or three stage polish, it's all about removing the minor defects that the previous polishing stage has left behind. And when it comes to rotary polishing, it is always essential to complete at least two, if not three stages of polishing. The fact is that it's impossible to single stage paint with any noticeable defects, at least to a high standard of quality using a rotary polisher. So unlike a dual action polisher, that can in many cases, depending on the paint and defects, single stage paint to perfection, you simply just can't do that with rotary. And in all honesty, this is the one single largest factor, together with all the amazing developments in compounds and pads, that has been using dual action polishers far more than my rotaries. In the next test section, I'm going to show you guys how a second stage of polishing cleans up at least a portion of those rotary induced defects. Now as I've mentioned numerous times in this video, there are always exceptions to every rule. But in general, the way to achieve a perfect finish with a rotary is by using a super soft, non-aggressive pad with a super fine polish on a slow machine speed with very little pressure and a very quick polishing cycle, ensuring your pad is perfectly flat on the panel. Now as you can hopefully see in the results, I have removed almost all the noticeable rotary holograms with this gentle second step of polishing. And although I can see that it's a little difficult to see in the footage with all the metallic flakes in the finish, there is however a little more of those rotary marks remaining in the finish that this gentle second stage just wasn't able to completely remove. Now I'm going to try and show you how to go even further to eliminate those persisting rotary marks using a three stage process in a bit. But I'm firstly gonna finish off this side of the panel using the same two step process as a comparison. You'll also see that I'm not using my smaller two inch pads in this second stage of polishing for the fact that your second or third stage polishing steps are never about removing significant defects. They're all about gently further refining the paint. So in many cases, you actually don't need to spend that extra time using their smaller pads for the final polishing stages, as the larger pads may very well be able to achieve the same results.
Now, as we look at the results after the two-stage process, there is no doubting that it's a massive improvement over the unpolished paint and a quick, good overall finish by most standards. However, for those of you out there with a slightly more discerning eye, you may still see a little haze or micro marring in the finish that this particular two-stage process just wasn't able to completely eliminate. So in the next test section, I'm going to complete a three-stage correction process with my rotary using the exact same first step with the wool pad and coarse compound and the exact same last step with the super fine pad and polish. But in between, I'm going to add a third step with the medium pad and medium compound to see if I can in fact achieve a better result or superior outcome and finish. Now as we look at the paint in this three-stage correction process section and compare it to the two-stage process, I can accept that it's honestly a little hard to see a noticeable difference in the footage, which has more to do with how the camera has picked it up rather than how it actually looked in person, which was in fact quite a noticeable difference. And I can tell you that if this was black flat paint, you would be able to see the difference quite clearly. But unfortunately, it's a little harder to see it on camera on this red metallic paint, though maybe some of you can. In any case, what I was attempting to show you is that these subsequent stages of rotary polishing after your first cutting stage are all about removing the compounding defects that you create. And the whole reason we do two or three stages of polishing is not because more polishing stages are better. It's because more polishing stages are required to completely eliminate those induced swells, holograms and rotary marks in order to achieve a perfect finish. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. Please like, comment and subscribe to this channel to show your support for these videos and I'll see you guys soon. So actually, that wasn't the end of the video, at least for those of you who are just hungry for more and more content. But if that's not you, feel free to say goodbye. Plus, I did say at the start of the video that I was going to give my thoughts on the Rupes LHR19 as well as their rotary polishing system. Now, I'm not going to go through the footage or scene right here, but just quickly explain that this rotary polishing method is closer to the techniques and pads I was taught on and used in the past. So it was just a bit of a nostalgic and fun trip into my rotary polishing beginnings that I really don't use anymore as the work I do now is a far cry from where I started. So firstly, the Rupes LHR19 rotary polisher. Honestly, I tried to find something negative to say about it, but it's hard to fault. It's light, quiet, smooth, seems to have great airflow, so it actually stays pretty cool. It's pretty nice in the hand and has plenty of torque and I honestly just really like it. 
I guess the only way to fault it would be in saying that it's a little more expensive than my Flex 14-2, and it also doesn't spin quite as fast at the top end, but I also have to say that I never really use my Flex at top speed. Maybe it's just because I've had my Flex for many years, and the rippers for just a short period, but I seem to be using the rippers each time I grab for my rotary. Secondly, the rippers rotary compounds. Now, I actually really like the ultra fine and even more so their fine rotary compound, which in my opinion, since Rupert has been making their own compounds in-house, they've become vastly better. But I have had issues with the blue coarse compound as it seemed to splatter more than it should and it also seemed to leave a film of haze on the paint that was difficult to wipe off. All of which I actually gave feedback directly to Rupert here in Australia. Now, I'm guessing I wasn't the only one that had these issues with their coarse compound, as a few months ago, Rippers brought out an updated formula that I've been testing since I made this video. The new formulation, which is out right now, is a vast improvement with the same great results, but far less sling and a great easy wipe off. So it's actually awesome that Rippers listened and did something about it, which I really respect. So all in all, these are some really exceptional compounds and are worlds better than I've ever seen from Rippers in the past, which also extends to their melee and DA range compounds, which I'm definitely using more and more lately. Thirdly, to the Rippers rotary pads. I'll start by saying that the ultra fine white and fine yellow pads are probably now two of my favorite finishing rotary pads. They are honestly fantastic pads that even after testing it on some super soft paints, they seem to finish about as good as any pad I tried. Now, I don't mind the blue foam pad, but since using the Rippers yellow and blue wool pads, which seem to noticeably cut more and also finish better in many cases, I just don't really see a place for more aggressive foam pads in general these days. For regular viewers on this channel, you'll probably know by now that the yellow Rippers wool pad is my single favorite pad of all time and the blue pad is also a definite favorite. These new wool pads have dramatically changed my paint correction world for the better, and I absolutely love them. But I just wish they were a little more durable as they aren't cheap, and they just don't seem to last as long as my other pads. Now the Ripper's blue and white twisted rotary wool pad isn't really my kind of pad these days. I understand that these pads still have a place in certain environments such as body shops and for gel coats and so on, but for me personally I get better correction from the Rippers stranded yellow and wool pads and a much much better finish so the choice for me is a simple one. I'll end this video by saying that I don't use rotary polishes anywhere near as much as I used to in the past. In my particular world and for my particular needs, dual action polishes today, together with the amazing advancements in pads and compounds, give me the results I'm searching for faster, safer, and to a higher level than ever before. There's really no rules or certainties when it comes to your own preference of machines, pads, or compounds. So my advice is use what you like and what works best in your world. Thanks for watching guys, hope this video helped, and I'll see you soon.